Hey guys, Simcoder here, and today we are going to start working on our drive history, or better yet, ride history, for both the, the, the customer and the driver. Uh, we are doing this because it will allow us to, in the future, uh, go for, uh, further with evaluations of the drivers and maybe even uh, payments. But I'm still looking into that and how we can do that. But so let's we can go right into it and go into our database and I'm going to show you what the database organization will look like. So I'm going to grab the database here and we will basically have another major uh, child which will be called history and that uh, child history will have a unique ID characteristic to each uh, ride. So and that ID will be completely uh, separated from everything else, it completely unique and you, you will use a function called push in order to, to get it. And uh, inside that, uh, that unique ID we'll have all the information that we need about this particular uh, ride. And you may ask then how do you, we know that uh, for example this user uh, went on that ride with that driver. Well, we'll have, we'll create another child inside here which will again be called history and inside it we'll have the, the uh, drive ID uh, set to true. So that way we know exactly in uh, to which I, uh, ride IDs this customer uh, corresponds to and it is the same for the driver. But let's get on with the code and because it, it is much easier to see the code actually working than to imagine it. So let's grab the Android application and go inside the driver map activity because it is the driver that's going to take care of this part of the code. And so we'll need another function for this and we'll call it record ride. So only at the end of the ride is when we record it. So right above the end ride, simply call record ride. And if you uh, have any doubts about how this switch work, please check my previous lesson. There we do it all. So yeah, now let's go below, below the ride end. Let me do it and write actually and in here we are going to create the record write function so private void record write okay so now that that's done and over with we can actually record the write so the first thing that we'll need and I'm actually going to grab this database reference right here to save some time and the ID so we'll need the driver ID and the customers ID uh, customers yeah ID but also reference so not customer requests inside here it will be child history that's the child where we will set it to true and let me just check if it all checks out driver ID it is user ID okay 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 right we can now move on to the customer ref and now instead of user ID it is customer ID which is the current customer customer that we are serving and customers okay now that that's said and done we are going to learn how we can get a unique ID for each ride and it is really really easy and so let's call it request ID equals to and we can use driver ref mm actually not. Mm. I'm going to make a small change here. First of all we are going to, so I'm not going to do this at the moment, let me just create another database reference for the 
history child, which will be the main child of the, the history where we will store everything, the information for every ride. So history ref, and I'll just say history, and that's the child that we want. So you can clear everything else. And now we are going to get the ID of this ride. So string request ID equals to history ref dot push dot get key. And this will give us, as I said, the unique ID, unique to everything in the database. Uh, so yeah, that's exactly what we need. So now we need to set the, both the customer ref and the driver ref to true. And this is not doing anything. Uh, to true uh, inside, actually sorry, I'm saying it wrong. We need to create the child inside driver ref and customer ref with the history uh, that has a key of request ID and its value is set to true. So you can do that quite easily, just say child request ID dot set value true. And it, this is basically just pointing us to the right place in the history ref to get the information that we want. So yeah, and now customer ref and do the exact same thing. So yeah. Now what we need to do is to actually populate the history ref w with a child uh, with a key request ID and then all the information that we want below it. So for that let's create a Nash map. New hash map. Map dot And now I'm just going to do some random information. We'll later add more and more and more. Not driver ID, but user ID because it is the current one. Now let's make two more. Customer ID. And then a rating for the driver. And I'm going to set it to zero and zero will be the default one. So if the user didn't give a, a rating, it will show up as zero and we know that we can ignore this rating. So that's it. And now simply pick the history ref dot update children map. And yeah, that's everything. Let me just check and double check. Uh, oops, actually that's not everything because we didn't place the, the child here, so the child with the unique ID for this, for this specific ride, which is request ID. I almost slipped on, on that one, but okay. So now it is done, uh, let's just run the code and for you to understand what's happening. So the app has finished loading, so let's go ahead and call an Uber. And now we get the customer request as usual, but we only get to the history part when the ride is over. So let's continue, pick the customer, uh, drive completed, and now an history pops up. And as you can see, I'm going to just to minimize that. We get an history here with all the information, as I said. Then we get the history here with the ID of each uh, drive that this driver has done. And as you can see, this ID is equal to this ID and it is equal to the one in the customer. So we always know uh, if we have the, the reference for this customer, we can always know where to find the history inside uh, this child here. And you may ask, well, why not uh, just double it and place all the information here and here. Well, and the simple answer is it doesn't look nice, it isn't space efficient and if you have a lot of people who are using your app then space becomes a problem and because of that it is better just to have one, it is much more efficient. So yeah, 
let's just create another one so that I can prove to you that this ID will be always unique. So let's open up this again, call over, drive completed, and as you can see another ID was created and it is uh, unique as well. So yeah, that's all for now. Thank you all very much for watching. I have my PayPal link below. If you want to donate and help this channel grow and be better, I'll greatly appreciate that. And so yeah, I'll see you again tomorrow and ciao. California dream about you.